you're a football fan Or you like desperate dance If you're a bit of a cook Or you like a good book, don't delay And you'll say yes, yes do, do it right, right, right away. away Right away, right away. Yes, yes, do it right, right away. away Give your mates a scare Tell them you really care Have you had a good day? Wanna have your say Don't delay Do it right away, yes yeah. Do it right away Right away, yes yeah. Do it right, right away, away. Right, right away, away. Today, we've been asked to help make up a character for a comic strip. Gosh, writing, writing rescuers, rescuers to, to the, the rescue! rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Stereo Steve? Hello, what's your name? I'm called Ross. Brilliant, what are you doing? Um, I'm drawing Stereo Steve. Who's Stereo Steve? Um, he's a cartoon character that I've designed. Oh, wow, will you draw me next? Yeah, sure. Great! Ross bases a lot of his comic characters on his family. Say cheese! cheese. <laughs> it's my favourite food, you know. So, what's Stereo Steve like then? He's a really groovy boy and he really likes to play football. And his favourite thing in the whole world is listening to groovy music. Oh, yeah. So, what's the main thing about Stereo Steve? Um, it's actually his headphones because he's always got them on, so he's always mishearing stuff. So Stereo Steve listens to his stereo. But what's he like? Is he funny? Is he smart? Is he happy? What sort of character is he? Ross isn't sure. But don't worry, we know just the person to help him. Hi Ross. Hi Gabrielle. I hear you want some help with Stereo Steve. Yeah. Come on then, jump in. I know just the place we need to go. Okay. Ready? Yep. Gabrielle Bradshaw is really famous for making brilliant art programmes on the telly. And she's also a big fan of comic characters. But best of all, she drives fantastic cars. Here we are, Ross. It's the home of Dennis the Menace, the Beano, and lots of other fantastic characters. Oh, really? Hiya. Hi, you got to sing, please? Certainly. <laughs> oh, that'll be Dennis the Menace then. <laughs> wow, Ross, look at this. Look at this picture of Dennis the Menace. He's got a shirt and tie on. This must be incredibly old. Yeah. He looks quite different, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, it does. To the stripes and the hair. Yeah, yeah, I think that looks better. Now, this mm -hmm. is quite an important thing, isn't it? You've got to actually get the clothes right. Everything, the yeah. clothes, the hair, the shoes. And we all know Dennis. Yeah. Like that, don't we? From looking at him as well. And what does he look? He looks naughty, doesn't he? You just know yeah. that he's naughty with that hair and yeah, that, that jump Yeah, you don't really on. need the title to see. You just look at him. You can see it all there. Yeah. So have a think about Stereo Steve. Now, is he going to be a goodie? Is he going to have nice slicked back hair? Or is he going to be a baddie? And if he's maybe a bit of a baddie, is he going to look really yeah. messy? How's he going to look? <laughs> Quick, get him! It's Dennis! Oh, Mousy, I don't think I want Dennis the Menace on my screen. He might unplug me. Don't worry, Larry. It's only a drawing. Hmm, well, he looks a bit naughty. Well spotted, Larry. Naughty. An adjective. A what active? An adjective. A word that describes something. Ah, well, Dennis has really messy hair. Messy, another adjective, yes. So, Dennis's hair is really messy to make him seem really naughty. You've got it, Larry. <laughs> oh, marvellous. Anyone seen Dennis the Menace? Get out of here! I wonder if he came through here. What a menace! He's definitely got the right name though, hasn't he? Yeah. Can you think of any other characters that have got exactly the right name for what they do? Um, Billy Wiz. He's got... Billy Wiz is a good one because you know he's going to go really fast everywhere. I think Stereo Steve is pretty spot on. How did you come up with that? Well, he's always listening to his stereo, so I wanted another word beginning with S, so I thought Stereo Steve. S-S, 
Stereo Steve. It's perfect. Excuse me, have you seen Dennis the Menace? Well, I'm Ewan Kerr, the editor of the Beano. Have a seat. Ooh, what are you up to then? Well, our job is to write all the stories uh, for Dennis the Menace and the other characters. Um, so, for instance, here's, here's a story we're working on just now with Dennis. Oh, well, that's Walter Softy's bedroom. That's right, yes, and I think you could probably guess what Dennis the Menace is going to do to Walter's bedroom. Make it a mess. You're right, <laughs> yes. yes. So he's about to do something really naughty. Well, he's got to live up to his name every week. Dennis is a menace, so he's got to do something menacing every single week. He's got to be menacing in there all the time. That's absolutely right. So it's the behaviour of a character that makes him up as much as anything else, as much as the way he looks. That's right, yes. Uh, Roger the Dodger has to dodge. Dennis the Menace has to be menacing. So Stereo Steve, have a think about it. What's his behaviour like? How does he act? How does he behave? What sort of things does he do? Right. It's Dennis the Menace! Thanks, you. There's a lot to think about when you make up a character, isn't there? Absolutely. When you make up a character, you have to think about how they look and how they behave. Yes. So how do you do that then? You use the adjectives, the describing words. Ah, oh, yes, the adjectives. Something else you're going to need to think about is how Stereo Steve feels, what his emotions are. And it's quite easy to draw emotions on cartoon characters. Let me show you with a few faces, because just by changing the eyes and the mouth mainly, you can change expression totally. Look, there's quite a happy looking chap there, but if we slant the eyes downwards and put in zigzaggy eyebrows and a zigzaggy cross mouth, suddenly we've got somebody who looks really angry. And another one, maybe very big eyes with little tiny dots in the middle and what a big circular mouth. What have we got there? Someone who looks pretty surprised? Yeah. Angry, surprised? Let's do another one. If we reverse the eyes so that instead of they're slanting inwards, they're slanting upwards and reverse the mouth. What have we got now? Ooh, someone who's looking pretty miserable. Mm -hmm. And another one. See, it's all in the eyes. Let's make the eyes very narrow slanty looking eyes. What does he look like? He looks really sneaky. And then one more. What about if you just do that? What have you got? He's sleeping. Fast asleep. <laughs> so different types of emotions, different types of ways of feeling. And when we go back to Dennis the Menace, what's he doing there? He's really happy. Really happy. Yeah. We really love him because he yeah. looks mischievous and mm -hmm. naughty. I don't think we'd like him if he wasn't, you know, really happy. I love Dennis Menace because he's fun. <laughs> I hate him because he speaks a load of rubbish. I like him because he always gets other people into trouble. <laughs> I like Dennis Menace because he's so messy, like me. I don't like Dennis Menace because he's got spiky hair. <laughs> I like him because he gets into mischief and he breaks things. I like Dennis from Ernest because he's naughty. Way! Well done! And he always makes me laugh. <coughs> Characters in stories feel all different things, Larry. I suppose they do. But how do we know that? By the way the writer describes them. Oh, you mean the adjectives. You've got it! A character might be angry oh. or... Happy oh. or sad or, or tearful or jealous. Fantastic, Larry! Oh, really? Brilliant! And how do you feel now? Oh, uh, uh, I'm a bit, 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 bit shy. Another adjective. Ooh. This is John, one of the designers. Hi, John. Hello. Can you show us one of your covers? Who oh, it is? That's great. What do you think you look like? I don't know. Oh, but you look brilliant. Are you surprised? Very. <laughs> it's time for Ross to finish Stereo Steve. 
Oh, I like that orange. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Darker. Oh, yes, yeah. that's better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Meet Stereo Steve. He's funky, he's cool, he's snazzy. He's football mad and he's full of mischief. He doesn't walk, he jives. Ta -da -ta -da. The only trouble is he can't hear you because he's always playing his stereo. That's great. I think I'm much cooler than Stereo Steve. Oh, I don't. Oh, can I be his friend? Yes, yeah, you want. Thanks. Oh, gosh, Ross has got loads of ideas and he's finally finished his first Stereo Steve comic. Wahey! Gosh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's called Brown Bread and Stereo Steve Oh, yeah. He's going out the door to play and then his mum says Brown bread! And then he says OK. So then he goes down to the thread shop and he asks Do you have any brown thread please? Oh, yeah. And he says thank you. Oh, so yeah. then when he gets home his mum says oh, yeah. Brown bread! Not brown oh, thread! Yeah. And then Stereo Steve is really shocked and his mouth is really open. Okay, Ross. Good luck with Stereo Steve. Right. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you very much for all your help. You're very welcome. And hey, I'm sorry we didn't get to see Dennis the Menace, but right. that's the way it goes. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, quick, Ross! He's behind you. It's Dennis the Menace. That Stereo Steve is really cool. That describes him perfectly, Larry. Yes, cool is a pretty cool adjective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Ma Mousy, Mousy. Let's write a list to describe ourselves. Okay, um, adjectives to describe how we look. <sighs> Me? Gorgeous. Uh, me, um, blue. How we behave. Me, perfect. Mm, me, um, kind. How we feel. Me, ecstatic. Me, um, normal. So, let's have a look. Uh, blue, kind, normal. Hmm, I'd like to have that person as my friend. Y you have, Mousy. It's me. That's lucky. Oh, well, see you next time. Remember, we're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Mousy, you were so clever about to think of all those things. I don't know how you do it. If you're a football fan Or you like Desperate Dan If, if you're, you're a, a bit, bit of a cook, cook Or you like a good book Don't delay To, to have, have your say, say yeah. yeah Do, Do it, it right, right away Right away, yeah, yeah. Do, Do it right away. away Give your mates a scare Tell, Tell them you really care. care Have you had a good day? Wanna, Wanna have, have your say? Day, don't, don't delay To right, right away, yeah, yeah. Do, Do it right away Right away, yeah Right away. Right away. What are we doing today, Mousy? 
Oh, we're helping someone to make up a setting for their spooky story. No, oh, Mousy, I don't like spooky stories. Oh, don't be such a scaredy cat, Larry. When you're writing a story, you've got to think about the setting. The place where the story happens. What was that spooky noise, Mousy? Uh, 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 I don't know. Oh. Oh. Rule loves spooky stories. The spookier, the better. The thing is, his big brother Darren really likes spooking him. <laughs> Rawl is going to get his own back. He's going to write a story so spooky that it will make Darren really scared. I was sitting in the living room when I felt a hand on my shoulder. Nah. Living room. Nah. <laughs> I was sitting in the park. Park. Help! Oh dear. Rule's not at all happy. But luckily for him, I know just the person who can help. Writing, Writing rescuers, rescuers to the, the rescue! rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Ricks is really famous for writing spooky stories. And he always has brilliant settings for them. In fact, his stories are so spooky, they're on TV. You are welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeeze. I was standing in the station when I felt a hand on my shoulder. Hi, Roll. Hi, Jamie. Mousy tells me you need some help with a spooky story. All right, so tell me all about it. I'm writing a story to spook my brother, Darren. Okay, well the first thing to remember is that anywhere can be the setting for a spooky story, okay? It doesn't have to be a graveyard or a haunted house. It can be somewhere ordinary, every day, like, um, well, like the park, for example, or the railway station, or your house. Now you've got to remember that you are the writer, okay? You're in charge of what happens in the story, okay? So you have to use your imagination to change an ordinary setting into an extraordinary one, okay? Now this can happen in any place, even a place like this. But this is a swimming pool. Yes, I know, but swimming pools can be scary too, you know? It doesn't look very spooky. No, it doesn't, does it? It's just an ordinary swimming pool. But if both of us use our imaginations, it can become a completely different and much more scary place. Mousy. Almost as scary as when you're angry, Mousy. Angry? But I'm never angry, Larry. Hmm? Anyway, Larry, if you're going to write a spooky story, you can set it anywhere. 
But you've got to use your imagination to make an ordinary place extraordinary. Well, Mousy, how do you do that? Yes, well, um... Hmm? Well, yes? Um, oh, there are lots of things you can do. Hmm. Um, um... As Jamie's about to explain... Phew! Go, Jamie! If you want to write spooky stories, it's very important that you surprise your reader so that the words you use to describe ordinary objects turn the objects into extraordinary things. OK? Now, wait a sec, let me get this. OK, what I want you to do is describe this jar in a normal way. How would you describe that? You can feel it, touch it. It's hard. And it's made out of glass. That's right. And, and it's cold. Cold? Now that's what you'd expect it to be like, wouldn't it? Yep. Yes? And imagine if you were holding it. So hold it tightly. And as you were holding it, it suddenly was furry. Or little hairs grew on the side, so it was hairy. Or it was squidgy. Or it was wet. All of those things would be unexpected, wouldn't they? Yeah. And they'd be quite scary. So the point is that each object has its own familiar sound. But if when you're describing it in writing, you make it unfamiliar or extraordinary, that's when it becomes spooky. When it's not what you expect. So to make the ordinary extraordinary, you've got to make things surprising. You've got to describe them differently from normal. But I like things as they are, and our home as it is. And that's exactly why, if it was different, it would be very scary. Yes, it would, Mousy. Jamie's written a scary story, but it's set in a very ordinary place. Oh, I don't think I want to hear about that, Mousy. Ha, 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 ha. I wrote a story called The Spaghetti Man, which is about a very spoilt brat who won't eat his food. And I set it in this kitchen. But in that story, this kitchen is very, very spooky. And the reason for that is because I pick out strange details. Timothy heard the latch click on the front door. Who's there? said Mr. King. There was no reply. Timothy heard the creak of new leather as a pair of heavy boots walked towards the kitchen across the wooden floor in the hall. And Timothy thought he could smell flour. No, he was sure he could smell flour and baking, the sort of smell you get when you go out for a pizza. He wanted to scream, but he couldn't. There was a hand over his mouth and something was scratching his cheek. No, not something, lots of things, like long fingernails. Only they weren't as thick as fingernails. They were more like sticks or pins or spaghetti. Well, that's what it looks like on the television. But of course, all those spooky details that you can see and hear on the TV, you have to write in a story. Now here are a couple of spooky details that I've written that you can hear. Timothy heard the latch click on the front door. Timothy heard the creak of new leather. I also had to write down what the characters can smell. And Timothy thought that he could smell flour. And I had to write what the characters can feel. Something was scratching his cheek. They're not something, lots of things, like long fingernails. Only they weren't as thick as fingernails. They were more like sticks, or pins, or spaghetti. Oh, spooky details. Exactly, Larry. 
Jamie's kitchen was spooky because he concentrated on details. Details you can see or hear. Or touch or smell. That's right, Larry. It's the details that make your setting come to life. Like the hairy spider hanging from a thread just above your screen, Larry. What? Oh, I, 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 Not to I, worry, Larry. The hairy spider is only a scary detail from my vivid imagination. Will's <laughs> 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 writing his story with a really spooky setting. I wonder if his big brother will be scared. It was a dark and lonely night. It was a dark and lonely night by Rory Pearson. I was sitting alone in the kitchen listening to the hum of the washing machine. The light flickered on and off and an icy wind suddenly blew the curtains. The washing machine began to sound like voices muttering. As a footstep squeaked on the floorboards behind me, I felt a cold hand on my shoulder. Why you little... <laughs> Rawl certainly got his own back on Darren, didn't he Larry? Yes, it was a really scary setting for his story. So, let's remember how he did it. Rawl set his story in the kitchen, a very ordinary place. And used his imagination to make it extraordinary. Rawl made the kitchen extraordinary by making it surprising and unexpected. And by describing details that were scary. Not too scary for you, I hope, Larry. You're not going to have nightmares. No, oh, I hope not, Mousie. And if I do, I'll just think of the big smile on your face when you've eaten all the cheese for breakfast. Yes, Larry. That's nice. See you next week. And remember, we're, we're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers! rescuers. <laughs> <laughs>